Now let's see if we can find out more about the users that existed on our target system. In order to do so, we want to go back to the registry explorer. And the reason is that when it comes to usernames and password management, this kind of information is stored in the security accounts manager database. And that's also abbreviated as SAM. So this SAM hive that we collected earlier is the particular database that contains the confidential information, which is why we can not see its information when we open it on a live system, for example. So in our registry explorer, we can now go to bookmarks, open up SAM, and then within SAM, we just click on aliases. And then on the right hand side, we can already see Registry Explorer provides us with a better view of everything that's in here. And then this is already a list of group names. So some of those groups seem, might seem familiar based on what we've seen earlier. There's, this, there's a description about it. And then we see SIDs that are part of this group. So this is already really interesting. Now there's another section down here, the subkey users. And this is something we can't really read well, but you can see this is already a nice view that is presented to us. But first, in order to really be able to look inside with what's contained there, we can actually use the exports plugin so that it's gonna create a spreadsheet for us. And then once we downloaded the spreadsheet, saved it to my desktop, we now need a tool where we can view XLS X files, um, something that doesn't come with Windows out of the box, but Eric Zimmerman Tools to Rescue. We can go to Tools and Eric Zimmerman Tools. And within Eric Zimmerman Tools, there's something called Timeline Explorer. And this is a tool that basically allows us to view any kinds of CSVs or XLS files. So if we open up Timeline Explorer, once it's loaded, let's go back to desktop. And then we can then just take this export file and drop it into the Timeline Explorer, which will then load for a couple seconds. And here we can see the information that we saw in Registry Explorer. So what this means is, if we go back to Registry Explorer, this is part of the user accounts and every row contains information about the particular user account. So what we can see is when the user account was created on, when it last logged in, when last password change occurred and so on. And usernames is something that's listed here. So as part of our investigation, we know that this system has been created way before our attack. So there might have been some accounts and that is true, created way before the time frame that we are interested in. So what we are looking for now is just some accounts that might have been active during the time frame that we are looking into. And if we just check out the last login time here, uh, it actually already tells us that only one user account ever logged in to this particular system. So you can even see down over here, last login count. So 18 times in my case, and all these timestamps and numbers might be different in your case, but it should be the IE user that is the user of interest because we can see this was the one that has been used at that time and none of the other ones had logged in during that time. However, we can also see one interesting date, which is all the way in the bottom. So there is a date that correlates to the time frame of interest. And there's a user called ART test. Now that's interesting. That's certainly something that we want to keep in mind as well, because that is falls right in the time frame, and we don't exactly know what happened. So we definitely want to keep that one in mind. Now scrolling over a little further, we can see the groups that these users are associated with. And our IE user 
not surprisingly, is part of users and also administrators. And the ART test user is also part of administrators. So there's a user account that was created around the time frame of interest and was added to the administrators group right away. So that's why it's something that we usually always collect as part of our investigation because that is suspicious. Now there's a couple more accounts and they come with a description so we might actually already be able to figure out what's going on with them right here. We can see this utility account is part of the Windows Defender application. It's just a, a system managed account, default account as well, guest account doesn't matter so much, and administrator. Now on our Windows Forensics box we are actually logged in as the administrator. But this built-in account, every Windows comes with an administrator account built-in, but this one actually does have no login. And that's why we can actually say that this one has not been used. Okay, now this information is great, but we learned that earlier we can use Registry Ripper that allows us to just parse out this kind of information in an easier text based version that we can probably then just take and copy and paste a little bit better into our notes. So let's switch over to Registry Explorer output, which if you don't have it open in your notepad anymore, now it's time to open up the text files that our RegRipper created as part of the analysis in the beginning. So here we have the different text files associated with the different registry hives. Now we've already mentioned that the SAM database is the one of interest and we can see here the same information that we saw on the Eric Zimmerman Registry Explorer just structured a little different. So here we have the administrator user and some details around it when it was created, never logged in. So this is interesting and the account is even disabled. Password doesn't expire, normal use. So this is some of the properties that is associated with and the account disabled is a good indicator and that's just something that usually is the case on Windows endpoints like Windows 10 endpoints for example. Now there's also a guest user that is never logged in. Now there's a default account never logged in. There's this defender account and then if we scroll further now there's the i user our the user account that is of most interest for us because we can see last login date sometime of uh, during the time frame that we're interested in and it actually had logged in a couple of times so we can also see the embedded read so as we remember the read is the last part of the sit so this is 1000 in this case so we can now just go ahead like i mentioned in registry out ripper outputs it's easier to copy paste data out of it and you can just go ahead and copy this section and open up our notes and which active accounts do we have during our time frame just paste this in there might have to do a little cleanup after this formatting we can now highlight let's just highlight the username then we have a first timestamp that we can work with we can see when was the first login time and when things might have started if this user account had done anything malicious. Now, which accounts were created? So this is something that we have seen as part of the Eric Zimmerman output. Now there's the ART test account. We can confirm again, no logins, but the account creation time, it's something of interest. So. I'd say we can probably just go ahead and copy the account creation time as well as the username where we can see the username is associated with the read 1003. Copy this over into our notes and keep it there for a reference. All right. Now let's move to groups. We saw earlier in the registry explorer if we open up again bookmarks sam aliases there's a number of groups and administrators has a number of sits within the group 
we now can already tell which ones those are based on the seeds because those are the ones that we have already seen or collected earlier. So if you remember 500, that's administrator. So the administrator account is within the administrators group. That makes a lot of sense, but this account has not been used based on what we've seen. Mm -hmm. Now the user account that ends with the read 1000 and 1003, if we go over to our notes, we can confirm that these are actually our accounts that we already collected. So we can just add the I user because that's the account with the read 1000 and the ART test, which has the read 1003. So questions answered, if any high, highly privileged activity was going on on that system, it was most likely through these one of these two accounts, actually a user account because we know ART never logged on, but now we have narrowed down the number of accounts that at this point are interesting to us. Now the last thing is, which users have profiles? And that question is because we have now learned a good amount about some of the users that exist on this system. However, that does not automatically mean that we necessarily have profiles for these users. And there's a specific reason for this. Windows only generates profiles for users that log into the system interactively. So interactively means that we have to either sit in front of the computer and use mouse and keyboard to log on to it or remotely through, for example, remote desktop sessions, log on to the system so that we can see the graphical interface and interact with the system. Only then we'll have a profile created as part of a user. And so this is already telling because that means if there is a user profile, a particular user must have logged on to this system and could potentially have performed malicious activity. So how do we find out about it? Now, this is something that is being stored in the software hive. And if you remember from Red Ripper sessions earlier, software hive, there is plugins that can parse out different information for us. And in this case for profiles, we can now use a plugin. If we go back to our spreadsheet and we search for profile, we can see there's a plugin called profile list parsing the software hive. So let's check out our software hive in our text output. And we can now just go and find profile list. And here we are, here's the section of the profile list output. And this one is also pretty interesting because we can see that there's a couple of users that, are, that actually have a profile. But these users are built-in users, which are is the system user and local service user and the network service user, which we've seen earlier uh, when we learned more about the SIDs. So this, these are the users that end in 20, 19, and 18. But we can also see that the IE user also has a profile on this system. So this means that we can now go ahead and copy this information including the timestamp because that tells us something about when this profile was last written to which is also very good information so let's go over to our notes so which users have profiles and there we are so IE user had a profile now this means that the IE user has a profile on the target system and that means there is going to be a download folder, there's a desktop folder, there's a documents folder and if there's been some interaction going on, there's potentially also files of interest in there that we will definitely keep in mind as part of the next steps of our analysis.